welcome everyone to today's seminar. It's a great pleasure to welcome Dr. Dom Chul in from Goddard Space Flight Center where he works uh, in their group that does simulations of dust in the atmosphere. And Dr. Kim did his undergraduate studies in meteorology at Poo Kyung University in National University in South Korea. And then he uh, came for graduate studies to Nevada at the Desert Research Institute, which is a well-known and a very large research center on atmospheric topics uh, associated with the University of Nevada, in, which is in Reno. Uh, after that, he did his undergraduate work at MIT for three years, where he developed a, a, a he used the NCAR model uh, to and incorporated aerosols, chemistry, and transport uh, in that model. Uh, after his postdoctoral work, he joined NSEP, where he uh, then worked with people at, at Goddard Space Flight Center to, in, to include uh, 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 dust, mineral dust aerosols uh, in, in global models. And now, then he transferred to Goddard itself, where he's working with that large group. And he is one of a uh, 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 lead scientist in the global um, intercomparison project uh, in which people uh, compare model simulation of dust in the atmosphere with uh, satellite observations. And this is the result we're going to present to us today. So let us welcome Dr. Ken. Thank you, uh, Dr. Sultan, for kind introduction. And uh, uh, I'm very uh, honored to give seminar today at uh, Stony Brook University. Can you hear me? Hi. Okay. Today's topic is a multimodal analysis and comparison with remote sensing data of North African dust. And I will try to deliver you what we know and what we don't know. And uh, the picture image on the top is the North African dust across the Trans-Atlantic Ocean. And uh, I would like to, before I move to the next slide, I would like to acknowledge it to uh, my uh, collaborators at uh, Goddard Group, Mian Jin et al, and Aerocom modelers, and the NASA, NASA uh, satellite team, Modis, Civic, Major, Kelayo, and the Aeronet teams. This is a uh, recent spectacular image of North African dust across the Atlantic Ocean, uh, captured in on uh, 24th June this year. And you can see the, uh, the, the brown dust plumes across the Atlantic Ocean reaches to the uh, America continent. This is real, major, and happening all the time. Taking a global view, uh, the red, red bars are the emissions. So North Africa is the major, most dominant source region. Uh, one as in, on this estimate, it's uh, 1,100 uh, 1, megaton uh, over North Africa, and Asia is another major source region, and there are smaller source regions like uh, North America, South America, South Africa, Australia. And they can transport much larger scale across continents, across uh, oceans, and they are deposited over ocean during the transport. So why do we care about dust? Okay, we know dust is a lot. That accounts almost 50% of the atmospheric aerosols. Why do we care? First of all, they interrupt the global radiation budget. It interrupts incoming solar radiation. It interrupts outgoing Earth radiation. And they are important cloud condensation nuclei and ice nuclei too. That 
important for cloud formation and the precipitation for formation. And the dust is important for hydrological cycle that changes the distribution of the precipitation and cloud. Near the surface, dust is important air pollution, air pollutant. Over ocean, it's an important uh, water pollutant. And uh, also, dust is an important nutrient source for ocean and land. And I guess you can ask questions whenever you have, uh, you want to interrupt me. And uh, this dust is uh, moved to air by erosion. To erosion, we need meteorology and uh, we need uh, to know about meteorology and surface. surface. Maybe important meteorological parameters are wind, precipitation, and temperature. Surface condition, we, know to, we need to know vegetation, soil moisture, soil properties, clay content, size distribution, and the use, land use. They are, it's a more complete case than uh, simple uh, parameters. And it covers very large range. For example, the particle size can be up to 10 nanometers, but depending on uh, study area, it could be 10 milli millimeters, and the study area could be up to 10 meters, but it could be global continental scale, 1,000 kilometers. So it's a very large, complex system. And I have a couple examples. This is when a blast are exposed to the sand blast for 30 minutes, then the blast can uh, completely destroy. Everyone knows that, especially in agriculture uh, here. Also, this is a uh, example of North African dust the plume of the coast and across the Atlantic uh, Ocean. And Do you really mean to say 10 to the 6 micrometers? I'm sorry. Uh, this is micrometer and uh, this is 10 to 6 meter. So kilo. Yeah. yeah, this is 10 to the minus 2 to 10 to the 4. You're including particles of the size of 1 meter in dust? I think it should be 10 to the 4 micrometer. I think, I'm sorry. 1 meter micrometer is 1 meter. Right. Yeah. This, this is our area. Yeah. I think it was the same. It goes over a great distance. Here, 10 to the 1 meter to 10 to the 7 meter, so 10 to the 6 meter. Right. This y axis is very Okay, so there are several techniques are developed to study dust, and uh, this one I try to show you how people uh, study dust. In not I'm mother, but I'm uh, interested in how the observation of people do. And this one shows uh, the wind tunnel of dust. So you have dust here that blow out with a large blower. Then you measure some uh, interesting your interest parameters. And uh, I like this image that shows the actual size of the car and the uh, wind tunnel. This is an example of the uh, dust chamber. And uh, there's, you have dust here, then you blow, and then you study the settling uh, dia particle diameter and settling velocity. This image shows the, uh, the, the actual dust uh, cap a uh, system that captures actual dust blown in real field. And uh, for those who are not familiar with uh, dust mechanism, uh, the, the most important process for dust vertical uh, uplift or emission is uh, sortation. Yeah? And that means that larger particles are uh, just creeping 
on the surface uh, when there is wind and the small little larger particles are dumping and then hit the ground releasing smaller particles and that smaller uh, larger large particles hit again then release another uh, smaller particle by doing that we can explain the amount of uh, dust measured in the uh, real uh, uh, laboratory studies and uh, I, I found on, on a web how they look uh, oh, sorry uh -huh. So this one shows that near the surface, the particles are larger and they are jumping, if you look carefully, or creeping, uh, just um, moving uh, slowly. And then that's actually when they hit, the impact releases uh, smaller particles. And uh, there are uh, several uh, images on this kind of uh, erosion process on the web too. And the data also are, has been parameterized, uh, parameterized for several years. And uh, this is one of the uh, parameterization done by Matrix Corina and Dignati in 1995. And they used a, a friction velocity. And when the friction velocity is greater than the uh, threshold, then it begins to emit dust. And, uh, this threshold friction velocity, which is on y-axis, are function of particle size and uh, function of surface roughness. And uh, this parameterization are compared with observation measurement. This is although this is low low scale, but uh, their parameterization is successful capturing uh, the this uh, measurement. However, the real world is not as simple as uh, what they do. There are more complexity. One of them I can think of is vegetation. So, you know, real world surface condition is not there always. Sometimes they are covered by vegetation or partially veg uh, vegetated or more vegetated. Another problem is uh, soil moisture. Uh, in dust, uh, in uh, uh, soil. So if you have two particles and you have water, then there is a, uh, the, the absor absorption layer and the in inherent uh, energy that actually stick two particles together. So these are need to be in, uh, to be in implemented for more realistic. Uh, of the parameterization. Probably the first uh, global dust source with observation I can think of is uh, by uh, Prospero et al. They, they use the aerosol, Tom's aerosol, observing index frequency globally. And then they compare with topography. <coughs> and to find that the, these two are really well matched. First of all, this uh, color shade is topography, mountains, and the uh, black contours are uh, thumbs, uh, let's say dust signal. Then the more frequency occurs near the basin, topographic depression. That's the way how uh, the Prospero et al. and the Paul Genu et al. developed this global source motion. And this thing happens over and over. More uh, black light dust uh, observations in greener areas. And this source region, this is a actually called a dust belt, but smaller dust source regions are available, uh, are existing over the earth. Australia, South, uh, North America, South Africa, South America, we all see uh, dust uh, over on that region. And recently, 
uh, using a uh, severely satellite, and you can develop their own those vision. So compare these two, you can see some geo uh, synchronous the similarity between two, and also the difference between the two. And uh, the another review paper shows that. There are two, four, six, seven different source regions, and they all partly away, but also they don't away neither. So it's half understood. Still, there are uh, room uh, to study, to know better about those, those source regions. How about the uh, transatlantic dust? Uh, around uh, 2000, uh, study by Guell et al. They simulate North African dust and they compare this uh, North African uh, transatlantic dust with e improved surface concentration. And then they found that their simulations actually successfully regenerate the uh, surface concentration. That's one of the earlier uh, study using models. Recent years with uh, more satellite power, we have better understanding of uh, dust. Previously, it would be a surface concentration or a column AOD. But now, we can see the profile, vertical distribution of dust. This is an example of the uh, North African dust uh, by each day. And uh, you can see the vertical structures are changing all the time, and also the you can see the where the more dust exists and what's the vertical uh, the distribution, how lost they located. And the best scattering attenuation shows the area of the dust plume. And the more data are available, so people are collecting more data, more findings uh, from this Kelaya uh, data. This is another uh, example of the what we found. This is a dust AOD, uh, although it does not say, but it's a modis uh, AOD. And you can see the dust plume here, day one, day two, day three, day four, they uh, transport to wet. And this is the, the relative humidity, I think, uh, the water vapor anomaly. So, the water vapor, this is a very dry air from the continent, day one to day four. And this is the Kelaya vertical uh, distribution. So you can see the uh, location moves to 40 to 50 to 60 days uh, transport to west. And you can see the, the vertical uh, height of the dust layer. So, in general, you can say the gener we can characterize the North African dust now. For example, I'm, I'm showing a uh, summer and winter case. In summer, dust layer can reach around 5 kilometers, and in winter, it's lower, around 3 kilometers. And uh, the the latitude of this uh, in summer season is uh, the maximum area is around 15 degree north, but in winter it's much lower near the uh, equator, and uh, the magnitude and the pattern are different too. So, how about the uh, modeling side? Okay, so there. Each column is a uh, different aerosol compound, and uh, this bar is the diversity, how much model disagree each other. And uh, since I'm, uh, I'm, I'm presenting dust only, so I'm just uh, focusing on dust. The diversity, which is defined as a standard deviation, average, uh, divided by average, is around 40 to 50 percent, one of the largest unknown uh, aerosols. And this is a uh, resident chart. And the, the deposition efficiency are also model different dependent. This one has, uh, I think, 14 different models. Each one 
uh, treat depression differently. So that's what we have in 2006. And uh, recently, more recently, 2011, uh, there was another uh, internal model comparison by Hunyut. And uh, they maybe I can I grab two uh, image, uh, figures from the paper. Uh, they compare Aeronet AOD, which is the most reliable uh, observation. And uh, in North African region, the yellowish are confined factor of two. For surface concentration, this is log low scale. So dust concent the model concentration is uh, maybe overestimating, but of the factor of two lines easily. So, so there is problems in uh, modeling. I mean, comparing with uh, observations and uh, compare each other too. And now we have a uh, Kalaya, so we can compare uh, the vertical profile. This is uh, two different regions. The black is observation, Kalaya, and all colored thin lines are uh, models. You can see large diversity uh, across the uh, observations. So it, it generally capture high near surface and then decrease over the across the uh, the elevation. But models do not agree much. So uh, recently, I I have paper published in JCR. Uh, the title is. Uh, something similar with my talk title. And in this paper, I would like to uh, answer those questions. What are the characteristics of dust from the observation with newer data? What are the differences between models? What are the differences between models and observations? What are the causes of the differences in models? So to do that, uh, I separate observation part and uh, <coughs> modeling part separately. So in a for observation part, I use AOD from MODIS, MISER, CIVIP, those three are satellite and aeronet, ground-based observation. And I specifically focus on dust optical depth. This is similar to AOD, but specifically for dust. And those data are available uh, from MODIS, MISER, and the Aeronet, Kelayo, Air. Those could be direct dust specific value or something similar to dust, so proxy estimate. For example, MODIS is derived from uh, fine mode fraction, and MISER derived, MISER provides AOD and uh, the uh, non spherical AOD. So non speaker AOD I use as a uh, dot. And uh, Kelayop is uh, it provides the uh, the depolarization ratio, so I use that as dot. Aeronet provides uh, the coarse mode AOD, so all have something I can take as dot. And I also uh, analyze fraction of DOD and the longitudinal gradient, multi year data and the vertical structure from Kalaya and uh, DO uh, air. And for modeling, I use I compare five models because they are they have multi year data <coughs> which I wanna check annual interannual variability. So all models are independently developed, all models are managed independently, we just compare dust because oh, these models provide dust specific output. For example, resolution could be 2 degree or 1 degree. Vertical resolution could be 30, 50, or 40. Some models use 10 meter width, some models use friction width. And uh, some these models have different size distribution. And the density is slightly different. So, and these images are uh, emission. I will go back to emission later. And uh, 
The model parameters are standard model outputs like AOD, DOD, emission, dry wet deposition, and uh, column loading. And uh, I also look at low frequency, wet deposition fraction, longitudinal gradient of DOD, and mass extinction emission. That has more than uh, the standard uh, model output. What's low frequency? Low frequency is actually the inverse of lifetime. So higher low frequency means they can be moved faster. Okay, this is the what uh, I also use the model output from 2000 to 2005, six years. So it's the mean of this uh, first six years of uh, 21st century. And you can see that all three modes, miser and the CWIP, have different, uh, very similar uh, pattern. Madam, and they all capture Baudelaire, half part year, year, year. And they have gradients over the continent and then decrease, de decreases across the uh, ocean. And their mean value would be point, uh, where is the, yeah, point two five to point two four. How about the time series? Over land and over ocean, three satellites follow each other, although there is some difference, maybe 0 0.1, 0 0.05 AOD. And they have different seasonality, but in general, over land, uh, the peak is in March to September, August, and then the AOD goes down. And uh, over ocean, AOD has peak in summer. How about DOD? DOD is about uh, half magnitude, but the pattern is quite similar with AOD. And those circles are aeronet uh, AOD, over, over uh, plotted. So the peak is actually the same as AOD, because the dust is most dominant uh, aerosol in this uh, ocean, Atlantic Ocean. And uh, I want to compare satellites that agree each other with our uh, models. Well, models, by just uh, visually checking, they are all greenish or orangish. That means actually the model has plus minus 50% uh, difference than satellites. That's what models are tuned to its best value. How about DOD? Well, it's uh, more spread, some are more yellowish. So first of all, you see the greenish uh, satellite that is around 0.1. But models are higher sometimes or lower. But the difference with AOD is the, the, the uh, discrep discrepancy of models for dust is uh, much larger. Now, it's the difference is factor of 4 to 5, more severe difference. Now, let me check the uh, seasonality. This is the AOD compared, comparison with observation and models. Over ocean, they have different widespread uh, range of differences. And uh, some capture some this summer peak, right here. But some models capture peak in winter. So seasonality is different, magnitude is different. And the over land, the spread is also large. So model has, uh, looking into this seasonality, the models clearly show uh, more issues. Yeah. How about DOD? Uh, dust is uh, here. And you can see that uh, we don't have surface, uh, the dust uh, optical depth over land. So we, don't, we cannot compare this one, just it, it is there. But if you compare a uh, satellite DOD over ocean with this one, mo all models are actually underestimating the satellite. So models are more strongly in those parts. How about the uh, aeronet comparison? I picked three different sites, 
one is inland, one is off coast, one is uh, uh, the North America, uh, some uh, over the uh, Western uh, Atlantic Ocean. First of all, the magnitude is uh, decreasing from east to toward west. The black line is Euronet, AOD. And you can see strong seasonality here. So some year is just larger than other years. And the monthly pattern is different. So if you mean them together for most year, then you lose those details. And the models also have uh, some strong seasonality, active season, weaker season, but models only does partial good job in capturing uh, summer peak. Winter season is more problematic. Are the, are the models driven by some sort of reanalysis of the meteorology? Yes, I, I, I maybe I should mention uh, strongly, but in the first few uh, uh, slides, I showed the model configuration that uh, some models use MERA, so, uh, GeoDesk, and uh, some models use ANSAT, RENAS, and some models use uh, ECMWS. So that's all. Uh -huh. Yes, How about the, uh, the longitudinal gradient? This is quite a simple uh, slide to understand how problematic those uh, models. Let me take the, uh, these two are AOD and this is DOD. Okay, we, I, I mentioned that there is a gradient and I average them with, uh, latitudinally for every five longitude range and then plot it there. All three satellites, AOD, close, are close to each other. They peak in zero degree east and then gradually go down around until uh, 60 west from 0 0.4 to 0 0.15. This is the real number, so it's uh, important. Models, the ideal models should have something similar one. But the interpretation of the up turn way to the west. Oh, uh, this one? Yeah. This one would be the continental uh, effect <coughs> from America. So, so there is some biomass aerosols. From South America northward? Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, this is the average of this one. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. So, and uh, up to this point, <coughs> there is uh, not much uh, continental uh, aerosol. And uh, some models are much higher over source over land. And uh, for example, Gokhart led one is overestimating. Then, actually, it's underestimating in this region with a stronger gradient. And uh, there are three other models with uh, something similar. But here, the Eastern Atlantic, they really well capture the magnitude of the uh, satellite. So if you compare it over this region, model does good job, right? And some models actually does not have good AOD, aerosol here. And they don't lose much. And at the end, they capture some here. And uh, this is for a AOD. How about DOD? We don't have observation. If we have observation, it would be really useful. But unfortunately, we don't have that yet. And uh, from starting from here, the some models have stronger gradients. So they just lose dust very quickly. And some even don't have enough dust to, to compare. So that actually shows that the gradient is really wanting to fix it. How about dust fraction? The FDOD is actually the ratio of DOD to total AOD. And if I calculate DOD, this is for MODIS, for MISER, they range from 0 0.2 to 0.6. So about half of dust, uh, half of aerosols are dust in this region. Gokart has the higher of this, but they lose dust and then just uh, it's a much smaller fraction. And this is something 
similar but they lose also very fast. And uh, the FDO detox fraction, the satellite, two satellites with some difference, but at least greater than 30% of error holes are dust, up to 50%. But models are really off. So that's something we can see if we know the observational. Uh, that actually, we know some apps. So we are learning uh, how to improve uh, Dust. How about vertical profiles? Now, the blue one is the, this is a client for December and uh, for summer JJA. And uh, dust is uh, about 50% to total. You can see, and uh, you can see the uh, vertical profile around the 4 kilometer in winter that extends to 6 kilometer in summer. And uh, in Gokar's case, this study compares Kalaya with go kart and then does some uh, reasonable job. And this is uh, the result from my uh, comparison. The black line is the uh, Kalaya, and I normalized it because the magnitude is order different. I cannot see them in one slide, so I just normalized to see the pattern, only pattern of it. And the models actually all underestimate over length. Over uh, Eastern Atlantic, now more than overestimate. That's already known from this uh, 20, 2012 uh, Bignati paper. And uh, over the Western Atlantic, there the difference is even larger. So the vertical distribution then may be size distribution and uh, the advection parameterization plays important role on this uh, issue. And sometimes. For, for this Western Atlantic region, the purple is high, but here it's orange. So they are not consistent. Sometimes they remove really fast, sometimes they just uh, carry over slowly. So that's another issue. And uh, this is the another way to examine vertical distribution using the uh, air dust observation. Uh, there are, again, several differences, and uh, somehow Calliope and Ayers observations has uh, strong seasonality, peak in summer around uh, 2,500 meters, and models capture, but uh, other regions, uh, the model uh, is more spread, struggling. So, What's the cause of the model uncertainty? Uh, maybe I will try to answer some of these uh, factors. Emission, dry wet deposition, and the meteorology, optical parameters, particle size and composition, and chemistry. Okay, these are the uh, six year mean emission field amount from these five models, and this is the uh, uh, from the uh, review paper, where uh, you can see the factor of five difference from the more efficient emitter to the less emitter, and uh, the distribution actually are quite different from Hadley and the split tars to Gokars and this. These two use same uh, polygenous dust uh, source function, so they are quite similar. And this one is a different source uh, function use different data source. Even observation is not fixed. There is no observational data to constrain these numbers. What's the size distribution you are considering? PM10 or 10, uh, 20 micron uh, radius? We don't, we don't know. Although some people, uh, people recommend PM10 for in intercomparison purpose. How about the wet fraction? Deposition is the combination of wet deposition and dry deposition. And uh, if uh, wet fraction, this is the, the ratio of wet to total deposition. If it's uh, no, there's no wet deposition like a uh, desert, then wet fraction will be very low to zero. Or 
when there is a strong precipitation and uh, the wet deposition is very strong, then the value is close to 1. And uh, you can see that there is a almost a set of two different uh, wet fractions. And uh, there are, actually I will show that later, but the magnitude are, the distributions are different and patterns are different, seasonalities are different in wet deposition too. Wet efficiency too. And also, different size distri distribution plays an important role here, too. How about the uh, loss frequency? Well, these are actually, surprisingly, for same variable uh, loss frequency, which is the rate of deposition to loading. And if you uh, realize that over source region, these two models are lower and then higher over ocean. These two are higher over source region and uh, lower. Models don't do the actual go kart The model I use is uh, actually half half. And no constraint. We know some physical sense that higher over source region there are more larger particles available. So the efficiency should be higher over source region. But we, we don't have such a, uh, observational data yet. So this one just shows that well, we, we, if, although you are happy with AOD, but there could be some other effects that you don't look at. And this is one of the uh, unknown uh, uh, player or parameters. Before you leave that, uh, am I to understand from the, the, the second line in that box that, that, that the deposition frequency is, is 30% per second? This is, uh, yes, uh, yes. Type, so 0 0.37, yes. That's the mean of this entire. So in the second, 30% is gone? The next second, another 30%? That's the vehicle. What does that mean? Uh, this is actually the mean of the six year and that's how I diagnostically derive it. Do you, do you really mean per second or do you mean per day over there? This is, I, I believe, it's second because I start from the standard output that is in kilogram per square meter per second. So, so. Oh, I see. You are trying to say it that way. <laughs> the, the definition here, deposition rate, is square meter, right? So I don't know if uh, you, you large it or scale. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll talk about right, that. right. I understand what but it's uh, too too fast uh, to say that. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a good question, though. Yes, I didn't thought. And how about the mass extinction efficiency? Uh, okay, so here you get mass extinction efficiency. It's in given mass, you convert that to AOD. That's how people do. And uh, some models are like uh, 0 0.6. And uh, it, so higher means it, you, you don't need enough more dust mass to calculate uh, AOD. So that's the way. And the point six and here it's uh, one point oh five. So it's a very large difference in that could be by optical tables. And this gradient you can see the around the thirty forty percent to point sixty. I I'm, I'm sorry, point forty three four to point five six. That's how go kart do. Some models start from 0.7 to 1.1 or etc. And uh, some models, uh, this one is higher over land and then goes lower. So massive skip, uh, diagnostic variable shows that model behavior is uh, also very uh, different. That means dust uh, transport is very model dependent. 
also size distribution is another factor. And uh, the very interesting uh, results that I did at the very end of this paper uh, is uh, the meteorology. All aerosol models are belong to meteorology. So if your meteorology is that, then aerosol models have to fit with that meteorological world. So if uh, one reanalysis this data is more ex more is wetter than the other one, then you need to reduce wet deposition a little bit. That's uh, how we call tuning. So that's how it looks like the mid the rain. Uh, this is a rainfall, and uh, it could be 2.8 to 8.1. This number is not small. It's a 30, 40 percent difference. So you you are 40 percent drier, then maybe you increase the wet uh, removal efficiency more. And distribution is not same. So that's something we have to care for when we do uh, intermodal comparison. So. Finally, uh, going back to the summary, uh, I just I studied the North African dust using observation, and uh, also I studied uh, with the uh, models, compare them together, and then compare between models. And uh, the there is a large difference, and no surprise anymore. So everyone accepts that uh, models are trying to improve its uh, performance, and I did uh, further. Maybe some difference would would be uh, I I use I analyze the loss frequency wet deposition spectrum and mass extinction efficiency in 2D maps. So that made a new uh, information for this study. And uh, this uh, one conclusion is that the simulation is highly model dependent, such as wind and precipitation. And uh, we need more observation essential to improve models. So that's all I say. Thank you. We have time for a few questions. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, at the end, you show the difference in the dissertation. But uh, one, one of the things that you struck, that they struck me was that the admission is different by a factor of five. Right. So is, is the main difference due to the meteorology or due to the parameterization? Have you looked at that? Well, there is a, uh, in 2007, they compared the, uh, they gave same emission data to each model and then compared the results. They still found a large difference. So you need to constrain emission first. Then it's easier to explain following processes like deposition or observation, whatever. But if you don't have Starting point. In this case, starting point is wind. It could be 10 meter wind, it could be uh, friction wind. Then it's even harder if you have, for example, I saw that uh, AOD is a uh, within factor of two different or model successfully generate. For surface concent dust the surface concentration, then it's even worse. So I think this uh, meteorology is one of them, not the only one. Yes. I don't kind of agree with what you said. You kind of think the emission is so different. So each model tries to adjust its own physics right. to fit it into the Atlantic Ocean, so they all agree to some extent. And so when you specify everybody's definition of the different emission, but I think the bottom line is still the emission is so much, the basic you saw, that it seems to me
Right. Uh, that un- uncertainty in emission is really challenging for mothers. There, there are a few known parameterization schemes like Yaping Shao and Bojinu and the gender set scheme, etc. They all claim their uh, scheme is good. Yeah, but it's, it's hard. Particle size are actually, in the fact, I think it's in the first slide I showed that the meteorology part and surface part surface part who, who has real data actually maybe some 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 of the sampling maybe they can say they have 100,000 sampling points but how much area that covers over the entire earth so that's a really ch- challenging part so I think we for mothers errors mothers we start from given meteorology unless it's GCM even GCM we, we are belong to meteorology so that's a uh, part uh, and the, the the emission parameter, for example, I think I would go back to um, this uh, the longitudinal gradient. That demonstrates a little well. This is a fraction of dust. You have small dust fraction, and then they just decrease slowly than others. Blue, the red one is emit a lot. Then at certain region they better perform, but that's problem. We are trying to this is go hard. We are trying to improve this problem, but I have not done that yet. So, mm. so yes. Yes. Microphysics, that's uh, more important for hygroscopic aerosols. Dust is more like hydrophobic, so wet deposition is uh, composed of two parts, uh, in-cloud removal, nucleus removal, and uh, the washout effect. So maybe people so far think in-cloud removal is not as important as the washout. So basically, it's basically washout. Washout, yes. More yes. Yeah. The, the old, uh, when you are showing this, the the time evolution of uh, oh yes uh huh it showed that the model uh, right I know that uh, in the product. Uh, This one is offline go kart, so it creates as a CTM. But we have online coupled one, and uh, that go kart one has actually different size distribution. They use gender parameterization. So the mass, in terms of mass, 
they are different than what I used to hear. AOD performs the same, but maybe this one is similar. So a removal process is not as realistic than it's supposed to be. So we, we, we tested the initial part. It's a, a hard, but still there. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that, um, more observations, perhaps, than, than questions. Uh, first of all, I, I think I want to compliment you on the analysis that you've done. I think this is exactly the kind of analysis that, that is required in order to understand the differences among the models. So I really compliment you on that. Um, the, it's pretty clear from the observation that, that the emissions differ by a factor of five, and yet other observables uh, like dust optical depth are within the factor of two. Better uh, that there's some compensation in the models that, that's accounting for the, 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 the that's bringing them back to some some observations because the emissions are so different. It is just an, uh, a, a comment about emissions. Um, the, I, I was once at a talk, um, some of you may know or know uh, the name of, of Yoki and Yosef, Yo-Yo, the, the Israeli uh, uh, aerosol dust guy. And he was at a, it was an international meeting, some modeler got up there and gave uh, a presentation of, of their, their source term for, for the dust. And, and he stood up asked the talk and he said, this is a talk given by a European who has never been to the desert. <laughs> um, and, and it's stuck in my mind. I don't. I, I don't want myself to give a talk and somebody can say something like that about my talk. Uh, but the, the the problem is, and the, the emissions is a really really tough problem. When do you get your emissions? The satellites are starting to pick it up. And what they're picking up is the, the sporadicness, or a, that is very sporadic when you have these emissions. You may have exactly the same uh, situation of, of wind speed, for example, but you just reach a critical dryness from last winter's rainfall, and, 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 and so that dust is ready. It's ready to go. And so you get that dust emission at that moment. You wouldn't get it any other time. So this makes it a really, really tough problem uh, that we're, we're starting to scratch the surface of in observations, but it's really tough to put them out. So that's my observation. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Thank you. 